all of you is apply whatever you know entrepreneurially. Be an entrepreneur and be that entrepreneur today. Um, you don't need to get a job. You can create your own job. You can create your own job and you can create jobs for others. Apply what you know entrepreneurially. The rewards are a hundredfold as opposed to working for somebody else. Another is, is that understand that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's the given. That's the thing you should plan for. And depending on how you deal with adversity, which always happens, determines whether or not you're successful or whether you're unsuccessful. And for a lot of people, you know, the adversity presents itself, and for a lot of people, gosh, I'm, I'm a victim, I'm going to sit on the couch, I'm going to moan and groan, and that's the end of that. I gave that a try. Look, adversity always presents itself, and it's your ability to deal with that adversity as to whether or not you're going to be successful or not in life. And I think of life as a movie. And I watch that movie every single night. I'm the star. I'm the producer. I'm the director. Do I like what I see? And if I don't like what I see, guess what? I'm in control. I'm the director. I'm the producer. I'm the star. You can change anything in your life. There's nothing that you can't do. Are you living the life that you want to live? And if you're not, about living the life that you want to live starting right now. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. Um, I threw newspapers, I did lawns, I shoveled snow. Um, I started, uh, since I've been 17, I paid for everything that I've had in my life. Uh, I took construction jobs starting at 17 because they were the highest paying jobs. After a couple of years of doing that, I actually found myself in knowledge and experience to, to build a house. So I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque, me, um, and over a 20-year period actually grew that business to employ over a thousand people, uh, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, typing, very high tech, and uh, made a lot of money. It's amazing what happens when you show up on time, and it's amazing what happens when you do what you say you're going to do. Um, I sold that business in 1999. Uh, nobody lost their job, um, and they're doing, nobody lost their job, and they're as successful uh, as ever. And in 1999, I was given the financial freedom to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, which was always actually the goal. Money for me has always represented freedom, and it doesn't take that much money to achieve that. But that's the position that I'm in. Um, I learned a couple of things in business. Uh, one is, is tie people to the bottom line. Share in the profits. It's amazing uh, what happens when you get everybody pulling in the same direction. Uh, another thing that I have learned is, is hiring and firing. I've probably hired and fired more people than anyone that you've ever met. And in that experience of hiring and firing, I found it to be really easy to hire. By easy to hire, you go through your due diligence and you hire only the best people that you possibly can and you never make a mistake. And I'm being facetious, you always make mistakes. Now we come to firing. There's nothing more difficult than firing people. Nothing. But if you can't fire people, you're going to be out of business because they're going to take their money, take your money out the door at night, and it's just not going to work. So as 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 bad as it is to fire people, I've probably fired more people than you've ever known. Mitt Romney, during one of the debates, said, "I don't know if you remember this or saw it, but he said, I love firing people. I hate firing people." I hate firing people, but I probably fired more people than Mitt Romney. And I'll just tell you, if you can't fire people, it just doesn't work. And that's actually the breakdown in government, is we elect a lot of people 
who have never hired and more importantly fired. And so they get into office and they hire only the best people. And since firing is so difficult, which it is, they don't fire. So it becomes, you know, in the public sector, people can walk out. Um, it's not you at the end of the day with their money, with their pockets full of money, and I'm talking about now taxpayer dollars that literally fly out the door. Um, they end up, they end up doing that, and, and you as the hirer, you as the as the political figure, um, you know, you don't deal with it. And in the case of the present administration, which is not like un, not unlike other pres, uh, administrations. Um, people hire people who have never hired and fired. And then that ends up uh, to just compound itself. It ends up making, it, it just ends up being uh, a situation that doesn't uh, work. I have a wonderful family. Uh, I, I am in love. Uh, uh, Kate Prusak and I have been together now for six years. And, I think we're going to get married at some point. I have a wonderful son who's 31 who's getting his doctorate in Oriental Medicine. Uh, daughter, Saya, uh, who's just terrific. Saya was valedictorian, University of Colorado Boulder, uh, out of 9,000 students. Uh, and they said that, uh, that uh, in, the, in the commencement, that uh, the valedictorian went way beyond straight A's because a lot of kids have straight A's and say it most exemplifies what we would like to see out of the University of Colorado. And my daughter, Saya, uh, car broke down outside of uh, Gallup, New Mexico. And this is Saya, my daughter, valedictorian, University of Colorado Boulder. Um, car broke down. She happened to know that it was the alternator, so she hitchhiked into Gallup, bought an alternator, went back to the car, and she had her tools with her to replace the alternator. That's my daughter's yeah. I don't know how that really happened. But anyway, um, I'm also a competitive athlete. Uh, and that's a bit of an oxymoron at 61 years old. But this weekend, this upcoming weekend in Taos, uh, there's a competition. How many ski runs can you uh, hike and ski? And that's something I've done probably eight times. And uh, the record in the event is, is 48 runs over a two-day period. And I actually hold the record. So... Um, it's, it's something I take pride in. I've done an Ironman in Hawaii four times. I have a goal to climb the highest mountain uh, on each continent. Uh, I've had the good fortune to get to the top of six of those seven mountains. And uh, this upcoming Thanksgiving, I'm planning to go to Antarctica to climb uh, Mount Vincent, which would be the seventh of those mountains. I'm also a pilot. Uh, I've been in gas balloon competitions, which are extremely dangerous, if you have no idea what that is. Sounds a little benign, but they're extremely dangerous. And I've had uh, three flights uh, over 1,800 miles. And the four competitions I've been in, which, uh, which was also, I was the co-pilot, pilot was Richard Abruzzo, who died in a gas balloon competition. Uh, we won two of those competitions, and we took second in two of the other competitions. So um, this is this is kind of my background, and if you if you think that um, uh, I, I also feel like I'm in touch with the way that people view me, okay? And um, an example of that is while I was governor, um, I got on my crash rocket uh, Honda 929. I'm tooling around in the Hamas Mountains. This is 